Uh, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings here in Mendham was, <clears throat> or something like that. Once was. Once was a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Aren't those things anymore. Uh, but anyway. Um, so, uh, perspective. It's good to throw that word in here. You know, words are, you know, you don't need too many of them. Uh, you know, to get the point, I would argue. Um, everything really shouldn't be that complicated. It's everything sort of has yes or no answers. <laughs> you know, most things. Um, and you can find the right answer by just, uh, you know, doing a little picking at it, and balancing things around, moving things around, saying how many, you know, good things, how many bad things, is a good deal, is a bad deal. You can recognize most of that stuff. Certainly when you're buying something. Well, I shouldn't say you. Because people do really stupid things. I mean, they, you know, they buy stuff they can't afford and they pay way too much for it. Um, and they buy stuff they don't need and they isn't going to do them any good and they're never going to use and all of that crap. So there's no real point in me saying it's all so simple because most people can't do any of it simply or efficiently or reasonably they're all really crappy robots uh frankly it's, you know, they are robots and they're just not very functional uh, but that's part of the whole evolution argument you know thinking about evolution a little bit the other day and um you know the whole idea of um sort of the dawkins idea about the genes are really the only thing really competing and um, the competition, though, isn't even a rational competition because the first thing they need to do is just make themselves indestructible. And then it's to their advantage, um, you know, indestructible in the sense that it's stuck in the DNA molecule, the, the little piece of code. Um, and, um, you know, and then the, the rest of it is just, well, yes, it, obviously the code to get to, to, to be populated to take over the DNA market, <laughs> um, it has to do something constructive to that cause in terms of making these little robots that actually do something that, you know, creates a victory. And uh, it really doesn't matter if it takes one thing away to give you something else, kind of like bats, you know, they did the sonar thing and then the eyes become sort of superfluous. Uh, they still have some use, so they're still there, but, you know, it doesn't matter if a little piece of code degrades the eyesight a little bit, if it gives you something else, like longer claws or whatever. So, and it's so you know, that's all that's taken place, is you compromise one attribute to get another attribute. Something does something really stupid, but it does something really good, you know, in terms of making you a better schemer or some other better thing. And uh, so the atrophy really isn't just some sort of natural atrophy. It's a it's a pretty overt destruction created by code that, you know, is irrational. You know, it has good pieces and bad pieces. It does good things and it does some bad things. Um, and it's just a weighing, you know, more good than bad. So it doesn't matter whether it uh, kills you, <laughs> you know, frankly. And that's probably why we die. Um, but anyway, it is because it's, you know in your best interest, in the best interest of your spawn, um, for you to get the hell out of the way, um, so I don't have to carry you around, but anyway, um, yeah, and becoming disabled is just part of giving them incentive to dispose of you, <laughs> so that's just, it's part of the incentive, um, anyway, so, um, I guess I'll make a, I guess I'll respond to a stupid jerk, <laughs> you know, what the hell. Um, <clears throat> there is some sort of anti-natalist international thing, international anti-natalism or yeah, anti-natalism international, yeah, I guess that's it, dot com or org or something. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not much for this whole big tent thing, but, um, I'll play along where it's not too offensive. Um, you know, all the people who are, you know, doing the wrong thing for the right reason. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it's just... Shit. Uh, you know, doing it... You know, like human life is the problem on planet Earth. 
Like, it's just about the humans. There's nothing else involved. There's nothing else taking place. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I mean, you could almost say all of the suffering is in some other form of life than human. It's, you know, humans are so outnumbered. Uh, but whatever. Yeah. Too, too complex an idea, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's, uh, <laughs> well, it does matter, but I'm just not in the mood to give a shit. I guess that's part of it. <clears throat> tired of it all, really. Um, tired of people. Tired of stupid. Uh, tired. Just tired of it. Uh, <clears throat> but again, endeavor to persevere. Little voice in the head just keeps repeating the phrase, I must endeavor to. Yeah. There's no other game to play except to give up and fail. And that doesn't sound like a good idea. So, anyway, um, alright, so I'll change the settings here a little bit and be back in a moment. Well, that didn't take long. Uh, <laughs> ooh got magic powers. I right, suppose I could move this down a little further. It might be irritating, but too bad. I like it. Uh, so anyway, so um, I don't know who this stupid creep is. Conundrum. He's made a video before. Long, boring. I don't know what the word antinatalism means. I don't know what its subject's about. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. There's, there's, some, there's not some written definition. He needs every word in the vocabulary to have a written definition somewhere. He can't figure out what it means. So you spell life backwards and he can't, you know, just imply something from that alone. Um, you know, clearly the argument is life bad. Okay. Like drugs. Is it a complex argument? No. You're really dumb. So anyway, I watched the first half of this, just boring, blah, 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 blah. He's just basically the first half of the video, he's making the antinatalism argument. So, yeah, fine. Okay, I already know it, jackass. So you send me a critique that's basically just telling me what I already know. Thank you very much. <sighs> anyway. I'm sure some sort of keywords will come up. I stopped listening as soon as he said... Well, the Ephelists uh, say you have to kill everybody. No, that's not what they say. I mean, it's you know, it's not that complicated. The idea is to stop procreation. It's like the uh, you know, hole in the dike kind of thing. Okay, there's cess being poured out of a giant cesspool, and you want to say, what's the easiest way to fix the problem? To scoop up the mess that's on the floor, or to just plug the hole? And so, yes, plugging the hole's a little complicated. I mean, stopping reproduction for all the sentient beings on Earth probably isn't going to happen in some sort of little benign way. But nothing happens in a little benign way. <laughs> evolution isn't at all benign. So, yes, you kind of have to use some evolution. And some evolution is sometimes things get exterminated by evolution, okay, by the process. In fact, more species have been annihilated than currently exist, and that's just a truth. And it's sad, but yeah, that's the way it'll have to properly happen. But obviously, it doesn't have to happen that way for human beings. <laughs> so, again, that's just more nonsense. And if you think animals are going to have some crisis because in a millisecond their life is going to end, well, you can make that argument that that's the worst fate possible for these little creatures. But, no, that's the best fate possible. It literally is. Of all the possibilities, they couldn't win any bigger than to be instantly killed by a nuclear explosion. That's about as big a win as you could possibly have. I mean, you can't make a rational argument that they're much better off dying of some parasitic disease or being chewed to death or being digested in somebody's stomach. I mean, none of those choices are any better. Clearly not better. They're a lot worse, in fact. So again, you know, do your little doom mongering and your little scare tactics, but they're only going to be effective on a moron. So that's all you're saying, right? I'll just trick the stupid people by using like murder words and stuff. Yeah, well, go ahead, trick the stupid people. All right, that'll be your strategy. My strategy is going to be to be honest. Okay, and the honest truth is, yes, for the 
lower forms of life, the ones that are less articulate and less capable of having conversations about how it's not that big a deal not to have babies and that you know condoms aren't taboo, yes, those creatures will have to be in some efficient manner uh, euthanized. They're not going to be murdered. They're not going to be brutally clubbed to death. They're not going to be in any malicious way harmed. They're just going to be unplugged. And the only practical way to do it. And with every consideration for doing it as efficiently as possible. So again, you can lie about my position and an effortless position. <laughs> Go ahead. I can't stop you. But why should I take you seriously? So, you know, as soon as you get those things wrong, why should I listen to you? You're a propagandist. You don't give a fuck about the truth. There's obviously no intention to cause any harm. And if you have some better way to get to the end, which is plugging the dike, that's right, it's going to require somebody's going to have to lose a finger somewhere. It's going to require something be sacrificed. Most good things that happen in the world happen because you got to chew up some people to do it. It's just a fact. How, how many people died, you know, uh, for all the, the good medical techniques that they have now? How many people were sacrificed to the cause? You know, of even stuff like anesthesia. Uh, lots of things. Just the, it's just a fact. Nothing comes for free, asshole. I mean, you know, great ideas aren't free. They take work, time, effort, energy. You know, nothing's free, jackass. Oh, God. Yeah, despicable creatures, these humans. So he has this, uh, steals the artwork and whatnot, as if he's going to say something relevant. No, no. And then does this thing, whatever like the morbid gesture. Oh, you're a morbid gesture. So I somewhere around the middle here is where I gave up and said, Ugh, asshole. Blah blah blah. And antinatalism, a position that ethelism is very often compared to. Antinatalism can be stated in two ways generally. The first So it's all this horse shit. I mean what the fuck? This isn't that complicated. Antinatalism, it's against people laying eggs. Not complicated. ...is to say that coming into existence is a negative for all sentient beings. Oh, who cares whether it's all or five? You're deciding. You're going to make a victim. You're going to tell them, it's okay, I'm worth it. All right? So I've given you a clear analogies, and you're just pretending they don't exist. You're saying you're going to go to the fun park, Disneyland. You have no evidence you're doing anything constructive. There's no wound in the universe you're healing. There's nothing you're fixing by existing. There's nothing, anything's going to happen. You're just going to satisfy a little heroin addiction you have. And, you know, you'll go to Disney World and get a little boner and say, Oh, I felt good for a while. And then you'll drive home. And you're going to do it by tying some other asshole, okay, uh, you know, to a rope and bouncing him down the highway and beating the shit out of him. Somebody else is going to pay the price for your little bit of fun. All right, the people in the mental institutions, the kids dying of leukemia, all the, all the uh, stuff that's going to happen as a consequence of this risk behavior you're defending. And you're just saying to the victims, I know better than you. I know it's worth it. I'm worth it. Yeah, they should just punch you in the face. I mean, all the dead kids, you know, the, the little 18-year-olds, all the dead 18, 19, 20, 22-year-olds who died in World War II, you're going to tell them, oh, yeah, what we've done is worth it. Fuck you. You know, we've dressed in our little jester suits and, hey, me, be, 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 be. Fuck you. Due to the inevitability of experiencing harms. Uh. The second is to say that it's immoral to procreate because that exposes children to harm. Yes. The first one can easily be applied to all sentient creatures. But well then, duh, why are you having a problem? Okay, so there, you figured it out, right? Yes, so it's risky behavior and you don't have a risk, take risk with other people's welfare permit. Who gave you the permit? God, evolution, dirt, a worm? Yeah, no, you didn't get a 
a qualified permit, one that I have to respect. That's certainly true. One that anybody with an intelligence has to respect. Your permit is written in cray the fuck on. But the second one is valid only for humans, as only the human animal is capable of functioning in the moral domain in any significant way. Oh, that's just silly, so whatever. I mean, obviously, um, there's all kinds of, our ethics are just as morally corrupted by nepotism and self-interest and all of that other crap as, as the rest of them. Right. I think we left off at ethelism. Can be compatible, at least to some degree, with the first rendition of antinatalism. We can oh, it's just so stupid. I mean, they're redundant words and they just mean different, subtly different things. One includes all organisms that are sentient, having there being great incentive to prevent the imposition of this stupid worm life. Uh, you know, squirm, squirm, die, squirm, squirm, die, squirm, squirm, die. Yeah, who wants to do that forever? Uh, and the other one doesn't. So what? Saying that because coming into existence is a serious harm, we can look for ways to. Pro it's seriously expensive, okay? Again, they, there are some people who lived a charmed life, okay? They really didn't have a whole lot of horrible events happen in their life. They didn't have cancer. They didn't survive this and survive that and survive having one of their arms ripped off or some other crap, okay? There's people who have survived their life and there's people who have had, you know. La 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 through their life, um, but it doesn't matter. The point, to my point, are my argument is okay. Is that yes, it's about imposition and it's about this point that there's nothing to be accomplished here but satisfy a heroin addiction that shouldn't exist in the first place. You don't cure it by feeding it; you stop it. Prevent it for every species of animals. Ethelism is not really compatible with the second presentation of antinatalism, the human-centric one. Yeah, well, who would bother with a human-centric anything? That's baby talk, okay? That's for idiots. We're obviously the byproduct of an evolution process. There's obviously a ton of mammals who have quite advanced neural networks doing quite sophisticated things. And yes, they can't do calculus. And maybe they can't even add to 10. But who cares? It doesn't change their fact that they are trapped in an existence that just compels them to chase, chase, and get crushed in the end. It's because, as Ephelism states, only humans are intelligent and capable enough to actually do something about the problem that affects... Yeah, so what are the obligations of intelligence? Is that complicated? Oh, nothing else has... We do. What's the what's the what's the smartest person's responsibility in any circumstance? The plane is about to crash. Well, I guess you find the person on the plane, right? The pilot has, has this heart attack, whatever, and the co-pilot trips and kills himself getting into the chair. Um, yeah, it, you just find the most competent person. You say, fix it. <laughs> okay, that's what you do. That's what intelligence does. Intelligence doesn't say, oh, let's just have a random, you know. Let's just pick somebody by, let's just numbers in a hat or some other kind of retarded method to decide who's going to fix the problem. So yes, intelligence with intelligence comes responsibility. Duh. Every sentient creature. It follows from this that ethelism requires humans to exist long enough to solve the problem. Duh. Again. Duh. In this way, ethelism is conditionally pronatalist. Oh, fuck you. It isn't any such thing. So that's just a silly exaggeration. Again, more perverse rhetoric. Uh, look, we could do it tomorrow. Okay, it's theoretically possible. Nuclear bombs don't have any limit to how big a one you can make and how big a mess you can make. So if we started tomorrow saying, let's make the doomsday, let's make the earth splitter. Um, we could get it done in 20 years. We don't have to change antinatalism policy at all. We don't have to say, oh, we have to make a whole bunch of billions and billions of people. Attrition would take care of it. So we got 7 billion people. You think you need 7 billion people to do this? No, you don't need 7 billion people. So this has nothing to do with any, oh, in the short run, we need to feed procreation. No, there's no supporting procreation. So just 
just lie okay just create a fake phony argument um, and again just discredit your own intelligence by doing so just prove to me you're not worth my fucking time by making arguments that are so weak and so bogus with respect to homo sapiens while antinatalism is categorical unconditional so what's the point of this? You're not critiquing ethilism. You're critiquing some sort of comparison between antinatalism and ethilism. That's not a critique of anything rational or meaningful. All right. Uh, yes, I would argue that anybody who thinks this is a human problem is a fucking idiot. Okay. I don't care whether you're an antinatalist and you're on my side in some respects. If you're too fucking stupid to realize what evolution is and what the fundamental nature of the problem is, the ability to be harmed, to feel pain, to be in distress, is one common to all of the mammals, not just you, not just the humanoids, then you're really fucking dumb. Don't seem to be interested in answering how they go from the recognition of various facts of the world to putting the obligation on humans. Oh, yeah, I, I can't figure out that that's what intelligence does, is it solves problems. And that's exactly what it should be used to do, is to identify problems and solve them. That's exactly why we have it in the first place, is because that's what it's really good at. That's why we have intelligence, is to solve problems, jerk. To end all life. This point is important, as the recognition of various facts and values can lead to many possible... What's the values? The values come from the fact that I'm a conscious being, experiencing consciousness, and I'm perfectly aware that there's lots of circumstances that would make life no sale i wouldn't buy it okay i wouldn't pay for it um it's too expensive and uh why should somebody force me to pay for it when it's too expensive that's all we're talking about here really is that you're saying you can tell somebody else what they should have to pay now if i could make a perfect world where only you assholes reproduce there's only assholes who defend this fucking moronic struggle that you seem to be lamenting in some way you fucking idiot you seem like a very depressed lamenty you know bitchy whiny person so why the fuck are you making some kind of argument that oh this is so spectacular let's keep supporting it let's critique ideas that seem to point out that maybe we're wasting our fucking time just going around in circles and not accomplishing a goddamn thing just wasting a lot of effort and emotions and pain. Well, conclusions. It's not that clear how the objective facts ethicists refer to would lead to this particular conclusion. Oh, I mean, it's just so idiotic. He just sits there and spends whatever it is. How far are we into this video? 11 minutes pointing out exactly why it's perceived as negative. And then he says, why would an intelligence think there's anything to fix when something's negative? So I could make this simple analogy. There's a bunch of sewage pouring into your living room through a pipe. You know, that has a valve on it. What do you do? Do you just live in the sewage? Or do you turn the pipe off? Duh. And he's saying, oh, I have some problem with figuring out why a human being would be compelled to fix a problem. Oh, I don't know what, I never met human beings that are ever compelled to fix problems. That humans never do that. They never try to satisfy uh, a condition and make, improve a condition. They never spend any effort or money or anything on ever trying to be comfortable versus uncomfortable. Oh, fuck. Too stupid. And it's not clear how they can claim to know that people have an obligation to do anything, let alone pursue the type of solution they imagine. Right, so, so he may, he's just saying that and he doesn't understand why an intelligence would understand a word like efficiency or fair or, um, you know, clean versus dirty, oiled versus, uh, you know, broken, you know, burn up. Uh, why an intelligence would make a, a, a motor that could run for uh, 10 hours rather than 10 seconds. He doesn't understand that. He's telling us honestly, oh, this is a complex argument. I can't understand why 
there would be any initiative or any in incentive for us, a reasoning, sensible organism, to figure out how to make knives and forks, to make it more efficient and cleaner to eat their food. Of course they would. You're fucking retarded. I have to. Uh, we invent shoehorns. We you know we we invent. We're constantly of inventing things to help make things easier and simpler and to reduce the pain and the suffering. You retard. Disagree with the claim that only suffering has intrinsic value. Okay, well go ahead and disagree all you want, but. You're not going to be able to show me how your happiness came from anything other than your addiction to the heroin. That your silly little fantasies of a romantic conquest or whatever the fuck you have as some sort of fantasy or fantasy is clearly just made out of an addiction created in your psychology or in your physiology. We're addicted to air, we're addicted to food, and we're addicted to some other superfluous nonsense that has something to do with making us feel like our dick is bigger or... You know, we're great, or we're wonderful, and that ego thing feeds us. And it's nothing but an addiction. It's a simple fucking addiction. So go ahead and make your rational argument that satisfying an addiction is intrinsically valuable. Well, it's not. I don't think by any reasoning can be shown to be have any value whatsoever. You're just creating a mess and then cleaning up the mess and saying there's some victory in that. No. And again, if that's outside of any kind of notion that it requires hard deprivation for you to have any of those fantasies in the first place. I mean, there was a time I thought virtual reality would be a good idea, but then I thought about it and I said, the only people that you can put in the virtual reality have to be people that need. It's only their needs, it's only their desperation, it's only their loneliness or their their need for uh, affirmation and all these other, you know, this, this bullshit psychology that would keep them playing the game. And where do they get that psychology? Because most people have to earn it. You have to earn <coughs> your, your hunger and your, your deprivation. You have to earn your appreciation. Your need has to be built out of, you know, time in prison, so to speak. You don't appreciate the freedom unless you've been in the jail. And that pleasure is merely the cessation of suffering. We are... Yeah, you're not going to be able to show me anything that isn't made out of that. That the whole thing is, like I said, right now I'm kind of tense and I don't really, you know, I don't consciously sit there and waste my time saying, oh, I have a little bit of a headache and you know, I got my knees a little gimpy today, and, you know, uh, I got this bad shoulder, and, uh, yeah, so I got all this, and, yeah, my guts are going, eh, eh, eh. Uh, yeah, I mean, discomfort, and it, the truth is, if I could just take a little pill that took all that away, I'd go, ah, oh, man, that was really cool, Whew. and I can analogize it to a slave being whipped every day, and then I stop, I start not whipping him, right, because he says something like, oh, you look marvelous today, master, marvelous and so I don't whip him so he learns how to do things to say things not to get whipped and it feels really good <laughs> yeah fuck you motivated not only by avoidance of negative but also by approaching the positives oh, right again so this is just more nonsense the positive is positive for what reason Oh, nobody, you know, cleans up a mess because, oh, I really enjoy cleaning up poo and, you know, slop. No, that's just silly. So the fact is most of the good things that happen in the world aren't going to happen because they're fun. So, the, you know, there's very few jobs that are fun, you know, where you go to work and you're just like, oh, I love being at work and I love my job and blah, 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 because your job is basically just eating donuts or something. Yeah, most people don't have that as a, as, a, as a way of paying for their roof. You know it. So why this babble about how life is just full of these charming events where we satisfy our needs and we make the world a better place at the same time when most of the time when you're satisfying your needs, you're, you've slaughtered some poor animal that was you know, kept in a little tiny cage and never saw daylight. You fucking liar. <laughs> you're just such a liar. You know, to sit there and turn life, the experience, into 
oh let's but there are these perfect little golden moments blah 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 so let's emphasize the 0.0001% of life and pretend the other 99.999% of life doesn't exist oh yeah you're just so rational these two motivational cases are quite distinct and oftentimes the positive motivation is pleasurable in itself so so again more nonsense in itself no it requires a psychology and you goddamn know it it doesn't have any pleasure in it in of itself like it's universally pleasurable how many things fit into that category you can't even do that with food some people are allergic to peanuts or chocolate or this or that um, there's no universals here. This is all just your psychology, what you're addicted to, period. There's nothing else going on. You just have addictions. That's what every organism has, and they go chasing them. And in most cases, most of the organisms don't know what they're chasing. They just know they have this impulse to chase. They have no idea what's going on. And if they, you told them the story, they'd probably be saying, why the fuck am I doing this? I'm sure if I let the salmon in on the secret about what's going on when they're going up the stream, uh, a lot of the salmon would say, hey, fuck you. Why, what? That's what's going to happen to me? Oh, the hell with this. I'm going back. And being surprised by something that gives us pleasure. In such cases, we don't register any distinct need. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you don't register it and because it's made out of your physiology, okay? Just like the act of procreation. It's made out of your physiology. You don't intend to have babies. You don't do all this other stuff. You're scratching an itch. And, you know, you're just, you're just denying reality to call it anything other than that. You're itchy. You scratch. It feels good. Period. That could be satisfied with that particular surprise. The obvious response would be that we must have been in a generalized state of discomfort or boredom is unconvincing. Well, to you, it's convinced me my whole life. It's pretty obvious that this is truth. If I'm distracted and consumed with a process, then I'm going to be in a benign state. And the more I focus on function, the more I'm going to be aware of it. So that's kind of obvious. So, but, but whatever. You know, you're unconvinced, I'm completely convinced, fuckhead. It's clear to notice when we're merely bored and where we're quite content, just not particularly overjoyed. So now you're going to sit there and do this, whatever. You know, try to come up with these generic statements for what comfort is. Uh, you know, you, you have ruler you can create somewhere where I'm supposed to know exactly what I am. When I know it's all relative. All I can do is I can always point. I have one broken leg and say, well, it would be a lot worse if I had two broken legs. Well, it would be a lot worse if I had two broken legs and an arm broken. Blah, 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 blah. It's all just a matter of comparison. It's all just relative mush. Uh, the idea of comfort is just not having anything harassing you. And it's strange to think that relieving a low level of discomfort would lead to such a high level of joy. Well, it says you. Uh, it's just because you don't know enough about, I guess, evolution and psychology, frankly. So again, I just have to say you're ignorant if you don't understand why the system can uh, mobilize okay, these, these um, circumstances to create an illusion in your head. Okay? I mean, I can just, you know, I can give you the illusion. Somebody can knock on your door and say, you won Publishing Clearinghouse, million dollars, blah, blah, blah. He's just speaking some words to you and it can make you deliriously happy, right? So you're able to somehow conjure up a great deal of relief. Well, you're going to conjure it up because your brain is going to go through all the things that are blighting it, all the things, all those negative ego things, all of the negative things that are in there, all these worries about money and worries about I'm going to lose the house and blah blah, all of that's going away. All of this weight is being lifted off of you and you don't understand why that feels good. Then you're really fucking dumb. As when caused by the surprise. 
And besides, why would we have so many types of pleasure if it were just the alleviation of discomfort and suffering? That's not what it is, just. It's obviously a motivating mechanism. The whole point is to keep us motivated, to keep us dissatisfied, so we will continue to do all the stuff required for us to maintain our existence. Being comfortable is not what we're designed to be. Sitting in a fucking chair lamenting that I don't have a good joke for the day, that isn't going to feed anybody. That's not going to get any houses built. That's not going to get the grass cut. That's not going to get a damn thing done. So obviously that's not the state we're allowed to sit there and exist in. It's one where well, I'm just perfectly comfortable. I'll just sit here and just pretend nothing's a problem. Yeah, that's not what we're designed. That's not the function of the beast, you retard. Lastly, we can affect very pleasurable experiences using assorted drugs. Which are... So that's a, an argument for how well life is working. That you have to basically just fool it. <laughs> yeah, you have to do something and anti what the intended function is to evade the function so you can feel better so you're defending a game that you can't play by the rules you can't play by the way it's designed so you have to sit there and change the rules to make it playable and that's your argument that's a good strategy I'd say it's doomed to failure because it's not fixing the game you're just cheating the game to high levels of pleasure even when we are not in a high level of misery from all so so we know that none of the, you know the, all the, the the drug that people are most addicted to in often cases causes you know terrible hangovers you know lots of lots of collateral damage dead wives lots of collateral damage dead people on the highway lots of collateral damage so this 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 idea that you just safely take your little delusion drug and everything's fine and the drunks don't seem very happy anyway so this drug augmentation to bliss doesn't even seem to be working all of this i can only conclude that suffering and pleasure both have intrinsic value well go ahead and conclude whatever you want i can't stop you from being an idiot <laughs> but that's all you're being one comes first one is made out of the other it's like the push-pull argument Okay, there are no pulls, there's just inverted pushes. And the same is true for life. There's just no good. There's just bad to be evaded. And that's it. There's no other function. There's stopping the whip. There's no carrots. And your delusion that there's a whole big pile of carrot, this little carrot paradise you're going to lead us to, or you think the human race is in now, is such a delusional, disgusting description of the reality that we're all sitting in some carrot paradise? Fuck you. I do think they have a different moral weight, and I expressed this view in my piece. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> the fact is, though, you have no right to impose the negative. You have no right to ever stop, start whipping anyone. So if you can't guarantee it's carrots all the way down, you have no right to impose. You have no right to tell somebody else they have to pay for your profit. Fuck you. The primacy of suffering. But that's a different claim that is made by Ethelists. I'll devote the rest of the critique to the red button solution as it's the most important point and it sharply distinguishes Ethelism from... Right, so the red button is just the euthanizing button. That's all it really is. So it's just putting the thing out of its misery. So we know the button can be made highly efficient. That is nobody sees the bullet nobody hears the bullet uh, and they're just gone like that impossible to come up with some definition of harm unless you think well I should have been told <laughs> why would telling you help I had a bunch of things I wanted to get done well is there any evidence you needed to get any of them done or that any of them were going to fix anything and clearly there's nothing to fix once all the things are that are broken or destroyed there's no you don't have to fix the clocks the clocks have also been evaporated so you can't say there's a oh there's a bunch of broken clocks left behind 
No, there's no broken clocks left behind. There's nothing for you to do. No pictures for you to paint. No walls to hang them on. Yeah. There's nothing you need to do. Everything was already done. And all other ideas from the suffering focused ethics umbrella. One can reason that if it's justifiable to kill everyone by pressing the red button. And so again, everyone. There's no rational reason that we have to kill anyone. So one word says antinatalism, clearly connecting it to the act of procreation. The other argument in the Ephelist argument is clearly there's no practical way to, through democratic process and speaking our opinions, to uh, persuade animals to use condoms even if we could afford to make condoms in all these various sizes and shapes, uh, which we can't. So there's only one practical solution, that is one generation takes the hit. Just as the same exact thing is gonna happen when the Earth blows up eventually. Those are scientific facts. The Earth isn't going to be eternal. It's not going to last forever. And someday, every single living thing on the planet will have to be destroyed. So I'm not making anything new happen. I'm just accelerating when it happens. So again, you can't make an argument about the event because the event's inevitable, asshole. Just as every species has been exterminated, asshole. Those, you know, every single species will be. It's just a fact, asshole. Then it should be justifiable to kill everyone on an isolated island. This goes against our intuitions. Well, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, it goes against our human-centric go, go, go bullshit propaganda just as being anti-baseball oh you're un-american no i'm unstupid <laughs> you know, i mean there's there's everything about our traditions are mockable and laughable religion oh please don't even get me started so either there is a relevant difference or it's not really justifiable to press the button or our intuitions are wrong when we imagine people again it's not it's your intuitions it's not our intuitions and so all you're saying is is that we have this aversion uh in terms of if anything costs something we run away that's why we have trillions of dollars in debt is because nobody wants to take responsibility for the real price of things. Nobody wants to pay the real bill. Nobody wants to get dirty. Nobody wants to do this. Nobody wants to do that. All right. That's a symptom of the human condition that is so obvious and so right in your face. And here you are pretending that there's some other mechanism besides the fact that humans don't like taking responsibility for reality. The very reason people have children is because they're not taking responsibility for the fact that there's a huge, gigantic risk that everything will go wrong and they'll have no ability to fix it, no ability to comfort, no, no ability. They won't be able to knit any blankets and it'll make it all okay. And they won't be able to show up in the hospital bed with little stuffed animals or some other kind of horse shit that's going to make the suffering all okay. No, there's no okay. And that's, a, that's the, a clear, just so obvious. It's right in your face. Out, nobody's taking account for the responsibility. Nobody's living a responsible life. But that's one of the human conditions is to evade it because that's unpleasant. On an isolated island, we know they may suffer in the future. We know they may procreate. But it doesn't seem to make sense to punish them for the crime they haven't yet committed. Okay, so again, it's not punishing them for any crime. So, so again, it's just a, if somebody has a, 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 an infectious disease, you quarantine them, right? But if it's a certain, if the disease is bad enough, right, then you start saying, well, yeah, you got to take more drastic measures. And that's all this is, again. So again, you're just pretending this, uh, there's, there's some other practical way to stop evolution than to stop evolution. No, you have to stop evolution. There's only one way to do that. Committed. And it doesn't seem to make sense to prevent their future suffering by killing them. 
Well, it makes perfect sense to rational people. So I guess I would argue that that's why everybody ever fought a war or did anything else is because, yes, the future needs not to be run by those assholes. That was basically the argument that, yes, the, the sacrifice now will be worth it in the future. Now, I'd argue that we haven't done much with all those dead bodies um, in the sense that there's not much to be proud of in terms of the civilizations we've built out of those dead bodies is pretty sucky. If it doesn't work for an isolated case, then why should it work for everyone on Mars? Ephilists. So again, he doesn't say it works for an isolated case. Of course it does. Again, if we had mutant rats that uh, reproduced really badly, you know, that uh, the, uh, all their babies, you know, lived horribly and died. Okay, and the fact is, is we don't, just don't have any other way to stop it. We can't stop them from reproducing except to kill them. So you would not stop them then. You just let them keep making the mutant baby rats that died and suffered and all that crap. You wouldn't do anything. There's no other solution. If there was another solution, I'd say, oh yeah, let's do that. Let's just put, you know, anti-procreation in the water. You know, we'll write anti-procreation on a piece of paper and dip it in some water and then we'll get them, uh, let them drink the water. Well, if that would work, I'm all for it, asshole. So until you can give me an explanation of how you fix the problem without getting your hands dirty, okay, without having to do something unpleasant, then fine, I'll take your solution, okay? But you're not offering anything. You're offering failure. You're saying don't win the war. Uh, no, I want to win the war. May retort that killing people on the island doesn't solve the problem of life. Well, so this is idiotic. So we already did solve the problem. Yes, it would solve the problem. You have some fantasy that life just poofs out of nowhere. I have scientific data that can demonstrate that it's a sequence of events that is so preposterously improbable, okay, that it's like rolling Yahtzee dice and having all the dice say five and they're all stacked on top of each other. It's an insane amount of improbable events one-time events out of trillions and gazillions and bazillions and zillions of permutations. The whole fucking earth is fucking covered in body parts, in DNA, in all the parts that make a DNA molecule, yet no other molecule, no other arrangement of the molecule, no subtle change to the molecule has done a single bit of evolving on earth. Not in the deepest cave, not in the deepest ocean vent, not anywhere on this planet is it doing something else than what the first and only DNA molecule did. The only um, structural variety of DNA. Because life will still continue, but Omnicide solves the problem. There won't be any future creatures that suffer. This response fails for two reasons. If prevention of suffering and of future life is the goal, then killing everyone on the island can accomplish that, albeit on a very small scale. Solving a smaller problem is still solving a problem. Uh, yeah, well, frankly, these aren't arguments I have any interest in wasting time on. But okay, you want to make these idiotic arguments, go ahead and make an idiotic argument. I'm saying there's nothing we can do about the rest of the universe. So if you want to play this, oh, the Earth is just an island thing, well, yeah, that's the way it is. Um, you, you know, even a drone technology, it just doesn't matter. There's no way of tra traversing the universe, okay? By the time you get there, it doesn't exist, frankly. <laughs> so you'll never be able to do much about anything in the rest of the universe if there was such a possibility or probability anyway. There's just no evidence that this isn't anything but the most bizarrely rare event. If we apply to the same type of argumentation to other problems, then we wouldn't want to fix anything. Because nothing short of the red button solves the problem of poverty, of war, of disease, etc. <coughs> Yet, people are trying to make progress on these and many other issues. Yeah, and they're trying to make it and showing grotesque failure. They're, they're creating every, like I said, you know, which, which I could just point to all the economic data. I, I, I can point to all the trillions of dollars of ownership that have been given to the inherited wealthy 
uh, in terms of holding our debt. Uh, we're making the rich richer, the poor poorer, just as fast as we can. And you're saying we're doing everything we can to fix things. Fuck you, you're an idiot. The dumbasses are reproducing uh, faster at the faster rate than uh, the, the, the successful humans. Uh, you know, the whole thing, it's, the evolution is in a backward direction. There's no standards for any of the process. We've broken a bad system. We've taken a bad system and made it even worse with your good intentions. We do other morally right things, whatever they may be. So, we so he's using the word morality, which again is a just an absolute pile of shit rhetoric. I, 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 you know, that's one of the clearest things that if you're going to say, oh, there's no definition of ethelism, well, there is one out of my mouth. It certainly doesn't include any stupid, jerky little play with bullshit word morality in it. So just get to value ethics, shithead. There's value in the universe. There's not morality. We think that solving small problems is reasonable. This contradicts the ethicist's response. It doesn't contradict anything. Cleaning up the whole mess is good. Who cares, all right? I mean, I'm not opposed. Look, there's, okay, there's a cesspool. It's leaking into your living room. I'm not opposed to cleaning up what's in the living room. Certainly. If that's all you're going to do, okay, well, that's better than nothing. I'm just more for, well, if we're going to work and do effort, let's not waste our time cleaning up the stupid mess. Let's plug the fucking hole. And finally, we can say that the ethicist's response is an ad hoc one. There is nothing in the ethicism itself that would allow us to derive the claim that killing everyone on the isolated island is unjustifiable. <clears throat> he just said unjustifiable, so it clearly is justified. So that must have been a semantic effort, uh, uh, error, <laughs> a typo or something. Um, no, there, it is reasonable. It is justifiable. There's nothing to say it's unjustifiable. That's true. The response is just an attempt to escape from the repugnant conclusion, but it's not grounded firmly in ethicism itself. Well, that's just a lie again. The fixing of the problem is grounded uh, in everything rational. So if you're not about fixing problems or making problems worse, those are your two choices. Uh, then you're too stupid to have any conversation about anything. So if you can't even advance yourself far enough down the, the rational road uh, to realize that uh, you have an obligation to be productive, not to be called an asshole, well, then you're pretty fucking stupid. Another counter-argument to the red button solution is to say that the innocent cannot be sacrificed for the crimes of the guilty. Doesn't matter. Again, it has nothing to do with crimes of guilty or sacrificing or punishing or any of those things. So again, it's a lie. It has to do with protecting, protecting, protecting the future victims. They are a realistic probability. We're making them not a realistic probability. Okay, that's all that's taking place. Their voice is the one being heard. Their voice is the one being listened to. That's all it's about. The other voices, they have rights to their opinions. I'm just saying their opinions that I have a right to impose is not a useful opinion. It's not going to overwhelm the victim saying, fuck you, leave me alone. The right to deny is stronger than your right to impose. And the innocent cannot be sacrificed for the greater good, whatever that would be. Well, of course they can. It's perfectly rational. If you can kill one person to stop a million people from going through some horrible fate, um, it's perfectly rational. There's nothing irrational about it at all. It's perfectly rational economics. It's perfectly sensible. It's, that's just the way it turned out. Sorry. I wish life was fair, but it's not. That's a fact. We're trying to make it less unfair, jackass. So you can't say, well, it's unfair to punish them. Well, the, it was unfair to punish the other jackasses who are going to be the probabilistic victims. 
So those probabilistic victims have more unfairness on their side. They have a bigger unfairness argument to make. So you don't, your little argument, I want my rights, doesn't mean anything when your rights mean you're going to be imposing or violating their rights, asshole. Your trespass is much larger than theirs. They didn't trespass on anything. They didn't violate anybody's rights. You violated theirs. Here, the innocent are merely those who do not perpetuate the cycle of life. This counter goes directly against the negative utilitarianism that ethilism is based on. It's one thing to say. So again, you say it's based on. You say, you put these words in people's mouths, okay, that I even have to bother with some sort of negative utilitarianism. I don't have to be bothered with it. I, the, the argument from imposition doesn't care, doesn't mean anything. It's an argument from you don't have a right to tell somebody else their pain is worth your pleasure. That's it. You don't have that right. That's not an intelligent act. Saying that one could tally up the goods and the bads in a single individual's life. But such calculation across individuals is not so intuitive. The ethicists would have to you. It's perfectly intuitive to me. Imposition, yeah, I get it. Sucks. Avoid it wherever possible. And if you can't avoid it in in serious cases, well then yes, you have to you have to sacrifice your liberty. Your liberty doesn't overcome that basic liberty right to be left alone. To provide a very good justification for that, they would have to justify the crime against not just the majority in general, but also... Okay, so more lying, right? There's never been an argument that we're going to have a, a coup and uh, not um, uh, defend uh, the simple democratic process. I'm saying, yeah, as soon as they got 51% of the votes, well, yeah, the other 50% are going to be out of luck. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm not against that. But the simple truth is, is me as an individual, if the button's in front of me, I'm making the decision. Because the fact is, I'm certain. I don't need anything more than my certainty, and you haven't in any way bludgeoned my certainty. I'm certain it's sewage. I'm certain that nothing good can come of it. I'm certain it's a good idea to plug the fucking hole. So unless you can come up with some rationale that says, no, we need to keep the sewage valve open and uh, the future will love us for it, unless, until you can make some argument that the future is just dying, can't wait, okay, to be a, the next victim, I don't think you can make that argument. I, I don't think you can make any argument that any intelligence, okay, could ever see any purpose in any of it. That once you're a certain, have a certain amount of intelligence, you can't even see a point and even, even if there were aliens, you wouldn't even bother going to the alien bar to have a drink. Because the whole thing is so built out of nothing. What's your big plan? You know, Star Wars only made sense because they created this huge conflict between the Empire and all the little sensitive people. <laughs> you know, without that, what is it? it Look pretty dirty, pretty scurvy, pretty useless, pretty stupid. So again, what's your where's your argument here that it's worth it? Yeah, there isn't any. That you're on some grand quest to some brilliant place. Where are you going? Your shiny city on a hill? Right? Reaganism? Oh, we're all going to go to the shiny city on a hill. I mean, even heaven, right? It's described as having rubies and, and, and emeralds. Oh, is, is that really get you off? You just can't wait to go to a place so you can just look at a bunch of rubies and emeralds? That's going to do it for you? You're going to say, oh, I'm here. I'm in bliss because I'm looking at rubies and emeralds. Ooh, I'm so excited. Oh, everything's okay. World War II is worth it. Look, I'm looking at these rubies and emeralds. It's so spectacular. I can't get over it. It's worth it. Go ahead. Burn some people to death. Fuck you. You're silly. Again, all you can do, you're, you're reciting all this crap, and all you can do is, is show some dull, boring, jester mopey jester image that's the best you could do if you think there's this spectacular future just waiting for us to grab it why don't you show some glimmer of it where is it what is it 
And if you're going to be honest, you're just going to show a dick going into a vagina or something, right? I mean, what are most people chasing, moron? So you're going to say, okay, it's okay to burn 18-year-olds to death because we stuck our dick in a vagina. That's going to be your argument? Well, it's going to fail. It's going to fail to convince me. That makes sense. Fuck you. Against the innocent in particular. Another way to present an argument against the mass extermination is to compare it with the Omelas story. In the story The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas by Ursula Le Guin, virtually... I can't even tell what the fuck he's talking about, so I guess he says something about Harlequin. The story of the ones who walk away from Omelas. Oh, I'm just so fucking interested. Didn't you see the movie? It's such a great story. They made a movie out of it. It's called Fucking Stupid Movie. Yeah, you gotta go see it. All the people live a utopian life. But this... I, I, and what is the utopia made out of? Again, how do you how do utopiaize human being? It's, you can't utopiaize us. It's impossible. You give us an inch, we take 15 miles. What, what, where, where does this utopia begin and where does it end? With what kind of amounts of gluttony? If I have, you know, a, a pure caviar, then I want double, you know, extra virgin. They actually sell stuff that says extra virgin on it. Extra virgin olive oil. Oh, yeah. You, right. You got there before, before. Like even before, before you got there. <clears throat> I mean, it's just too stupid. The state of the city of Omelas has a cost. In the basement of one of the buildings, there is a child living in abject misery and terror. Everyone knows that. The right. So I wouldn't live there. So if that was, if that's the cost of my existence, torturing something, I don't want it. I don't want any business. I don't want a part of any of that. I don't want to be doing that to anything to do this stupid shit. If I was doing something great, fine. But no, to just live and wank. Forget it. I'm not torturing something for that. You are, because you're a sadistic fuck. Life of great choice and higher pursuits depends on that child's existence in this exact horrendous state. The story can be used as an argument for antinatalism. Uh, it's already been used. So, <laughs> so, so again, you're you're closing in to a story that's already been told 17 different ways. I already told it in this video, right? You want to go to Disneyland, but you're going to have to torture somebody to do it, and you're all for it. You're saying I'm in. I'm saying no decent person says I'm in. Only an asshole says I'm in. Even as an argument against classical utilitarianism. We can also draw an analogy between Omelas and the world at large. The citizens of... Again, trivial pursuit, okay, for non-trivial harm. It's a, it's a no-brainer. Now, if you were saying, oh, we're, we're going to torture one person to save a bunch of people. Not to go to Disneyland, but to save people from being tortured. Well, then, yeah, the little cost to the present individual be accepted. The cost to one generation to prevent harms from billions of generations, yes, that's acceptable. If I can kill one cat today and prevent 453,000 kittens from being slaughtered tomorrow in some brutal way, run over and in other ways uh, starved and uh, you know killed by attritions and all kinds of uh, uh, miseries, now yeah, I'm doing it. Because I'm rational. Omelas are like the future generations whose good standing or salvation from existence is paid for by something utterly abhorrent, either the child in the basement or total annihilation of everyone on the planet. So again, that's going to happen anyway. We're just saying, let's move it up a few hundred thousand years. <laughs> that's all. There's nothing else happening here. You're just going to torture these people here on Earth. You know, global warming is going to torture a bunch of people eventually. It's going to happen. There's going to be a, 
uh, you know, earthquake and a tidal wave and a tsunamis and all this kind of stuff is going to happen. And there's going to be really big numbers in some of these events. Um, we got a little tiny taste of it with this little virus thing. You know, the virus could have been twice as bad or it could have killed twice as many or it could have killed three times as many. Um, you know, something much worse can show up. And you're just going to torture a bunch of people for no good fucking reason over and over and over and over again so you can make videos of, of dull, boring gestures and say somehow I think it's all for the good because I say so. Not because I can demonstrate so, not that because I can explain so, not, not because I ha can understand that somehow, oh yeah, there's a huge defense for our psychology. We're actually pursuing some great goal besides just satisfying our deprivations, besides just satisfying itches and scratches and, and wounds, besides putting a little comforting gel on our little psychological wounds. No, we're doing something else. No, we're not doing something else. That's the simple truth and you're just evading it. This isn't a clear analytical counter-argument, of course. It is an intuition pump that allows us to doubt the solution proposed by ethelists. No, so again, he's again saying that he can't understand the difference between the two equations. Going to Disneyland at somebody else's harm are going to cure a disease at somebody else's harm. That it would make sense. Look, Babe Ruth, right? Kind of a dishonorable character in a lot of his life. Well, in the end, he was pretty, he was pretty Babe Ruthy. okay? He lived up to the image because he basically said, yeah, do some experiments on me. If you can learn something, do it, okay? And so, you know, he died, but, you know, you know, maybe he didn't go through any great harm because of it. But I'm just saying the point is he risked himself. He put himself at risk for the future, all right? That's an admirable thing. Um, and that's all of us should accept having to pay those kind of prices. If we're presenting some risk to the future, uh, you know, we should be able to take responsibility for that. Say, yeah, I really don't have a right to put something else at jeopardy. All right. You, so you can't understand the difference between sacrifices that have to be made to save people from harm and sacrifices of uh, being made to merely gratify superficial and trivial desires. Having children is a trivial desire, okay? It has nothing to do with any rational ambition. None of the people doing it have any rational ambitions, okay? It's just about ego service. It's about sloppiness and laziness and recklessness. Uh, it's about complete irrational daydreaming about what their future is going to be. It's their own psychological need to somehow undo their own maturation because their mommy treated them wrong. They're going to try to treat somebody right. And now all that psychology we already know doesn't make people with character in the first place. You want to make an asshole? <laughs> yeah, treat them, give, give them everything, comfort them, all right, and they'll be an asshole. In conclusion, I have to say that atheism is not precise enough. The arguments are not clear enough. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> it's too silly. Yeah, no, the analogies are perfectly clear. What fucking right do you have to put some child on a tightrope with a wacky little umbrella, okay, and a hammer in the other hand and say, walk the tightrope? Here's a bunch of knives and swords. That's going to be your big punishment. And your big victory is not the punishment. That's going to be your big victory, okay? Not the punishment today. You'll get to the other side, and then we kill you anyway. Then we just throw you onto the, the fucking uh, uh, spikes. So that's the big accomplishment is, I did it! What did you do? Oh, you survived longer than somebody else. But that's all you did, okay? You didn't do anything else. Enough for me to accept it especially when we consider the solution proposed by it in debates yeah whatever you're too fucking stupid i don't want to pay for a better i don't want to pay to improve i don't want to pay to fix i don't want to pay well then you're not going to fix anything you're just going to be a useless sack of shit here you are just wasting your brain space sitting there contriving just deliberately contriving excuses 
Oh, it doesn't fit with my intuition. Well, what, you're too stupid to understand that intuition is the last thing you want to pay attention to? That thinking is the opposite of intuition? Thoughtfulness, you know, getting to the reality? Our intuitions are silly. You know, I like the color blue. You're gonna you're gonna torture shit because you like the color blue. Concerning religion and the existence of God, we often hear that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Well, we don't have. I'm not making any extraordinary claims. So again, that's more horseshit. Uh, there's nothing extraordinary in the claim that you are literally, quite literally, quite as a practical fact, putting a child at risk by creating it. And that in evolution, you know, when we're going to talk about the bigger picture of the animal world, clearly the preponderance of these tightrope walkers fall into the daggers. They get eaten by the crocodile. They get bitten by the cobra. All of that shit happens over and over and over again. Their lives are short, miserable, and hard. And their death is brutal. That's the truth. And you're saying you're okay with that because some of them live and lay eggs. And that's good. You're not saying anything. You're not explaining how the victories are real victories. How even the winners haven't paid a huge price to win, that they aren't covered in scars. The zebras that are the oldest zebras walk in the plains of Africa, go look at their ass. Because there's a whole bunch of scars on it, a whole bunch of claw marks on their ass. Okay, they've had to earn their survival uh, by going through a lot of terror and torment, no doubt. None of it was easy, none of it was free, and they're the winners. You retard. Let's apply the same standard to ethics. Extraordinary moral claims and solutions. So again, moral claims. Oh, it's a big giant moral leap for me to say, hey, I just landed here on Earth as a new victim, right? So given very few tools to navigate this slop with, live in a world full of liars and crooks, I'm supposed to be doing something decent because I'm intelligent, but I'm also supposed to be some dumb animal that's supposed to just eke out his fucking survival and say, what's in it for me and what makes me stronger? What does fit for me, 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 me? Well, logically, that doesn't make any sense, so I acquire some enough knowledge to know that's horse shit. So what am I here to do? Oh, clean up messes. That's all I'm here to do. So I've been fucking hired as a janitor or with no salary, no right to say I didn't want to be a janitor, no right to say, fuck you, leave me alone. Um, this is just horse shit. You don't understand. Oh, oh, you think that's an extraordinary claim. Now, there's nothing extraordinary about the claim that I know that I'm a victim. I know that I was just thrown here and I know that the future there's going to be some new person who's going to fucking find himself in a stupid world with stupid parents doing stupid things and he's going to say what the fuck am I doing here what fucking idiotic pile of circumstances led to this stupid event what am I doing in this shithole that's going to keep coming out of people's mouths until we fucking sew up these vaginies require very rigorous arguments, clearly explained concepts. Yes, whatever. It's been clearly explained, clearly made obvious through all of these analogies. Again, what creep tortures somebody to go to Disneyland? Yeah, just a creep. Precise language and a lot of explicitly presented evidence. The evidence I'm conscious, shithead. Apparently, you're not. Apparently, what's going on in your brain is some other event than what's going on in mine. I'm saying my life, at its best, has been difficult struggle, and at its worst has been absolutely terrifyingly horrible. <laughs> so what, what, you know. And yes, okay, there were these 15 minutes of glory, you know, where everything went right. But it was about 15 minutes. All right, what an asshole. 
Ugh, I hate people. Hate this planet. <laughs> yeah. Hate that I have to do this shit. Hate that I have to be a part of any of it. It's just so disgusting. People are just so fucking dishonest. So fucking stupid. Ugh. Yeah. So anyway. Um, that's probably enough for a video, right? Yeah, that's enough. <sighs> So tired. Uh, let me move that up. And yeah, get rid of this. Yeah, that's good. All right. So, um, so I, you know, I'm talking to the converted, but, you know, so what's the point in a way? Uh, yes, yeah, so some other messaging needs to be created, other kinds of, you know, whatever. Um, thought fodder. <laughs> you know, have to make thought fodder. You know, so, you know, Bits of uh, muse attainment, muse attainment, <laughs> you know, inspire people to be better than they are and to think better. Uh, and I probably aren't doing that because I'm sick and tired. And it's not good to have a poster child who's sick and tired. And yeah, I'm sick and tired. Ugh, so sick and tired. Anyway, so till the next time and such. When I will attempt to be more musical. Musical. Not musical, but musical. <laughs> All right, it's not much of a joke and probably wasn't worth. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh. <laughs> I just hate it here. Oh, anyway. All right, endeavor to persevere. I'll be a rock. Very fragile, cracked, old Brock. Ugh. Anyway, till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Quit complaining, Aaron. Just do your damn job. All right. The best I can. That's just an excuse, asshole. That's a pretty good excuse. Yeah.